The St. Louis Arch was built in 1965 as a monument to the westward expansion of the United States. It is also known as the Gateway Arch, as its location on the Mississippi River made those explorers and pioneers feel like they had come to the door to the west. From there, all things were possible. As parents, we often need a gateway tool in order for our other parenting tools to be effective. We and our children need the doors of our minds and hearts to open wide so that we can then use great parenting tools like problem solving sessions or family meetings. Such a gateway tool is time out. Parents need serious help when dealing with high intensity aggressive behaviors that should not be ignored, hitting, biting, or kicking. When our kids are losing it and harming people or pets or themselves, they need serious help in getting calmed down so that they can learn how to handle life. But first, they have to calm down. They are certainly not in that moment at a teachable moment. Enter timeout or positive timeout. It is a gateway because it is not a true tool by itself. If effectively used, it enables us to use all the other tools in our parenting toolboxes with great competency. It is the means to an end, but not the end itself. The idea is to have it last only as long as it needs to, and to give your child the opportunity for reconciliatory justice, making amends to those harmed, and to plan for what they will do next time when they are in that situation. Never use time out with children younger than three years old. They do not have the cognitive skills for this. Redirection and ignoring skills are much more appropriate for them. But even time out is difficult to use. It is hard work. It's time consuming, often inconvenient, and can be frustrating. It was a great invention that kept parents from hitting kids so much, but it has also been terribly misused. Kids locked in dark closets or forced to stand still with their arms extended at their sides for long periods of time or taken to the corner 20 times in a day for meaningless infractions. We need to go back to some basics. Children think and act better when they feel better. So where, in the words of parent educator Jane Nelson, did we ever get the crazy idea that in order to make children do better, we first have to make them feel worse? We operate under this erroneous assumption because we believe it. We have been sold a false narrative that you must suffer in order to learn. We ignore the fact that suffering can actually shut down learning. If the child's thoughts and energy are so directed toward the punisher, mean mommy, not only is a lesson not learned, but we have also taught things we didn't want to teach, resentment, revenge, rebellion, or retreat. We must truly ask ourselves, are we more interested in pain and shame or teaching and learning? Do we want to find blame or do we want to find solutions? If our goal is to help our children do better and find solutions to problems, we must help them learn ways to feel better. Discipline is teaching, and we must teach this life skill. Punitive timeout deals only with the past. Positive timeout deals with the future as well as the past. If children can learn what to do when they begin to feel out of control and then how to control their own behavior, they'll bring to their adulthood maturity and responsibility. For them to effectively learn these, however, they must be involved when they are young. To do this, begin by talking with your child when everyone is in a good mood. Talk about why people need cooling off periods. Anyone can get into a bad mood and can begin to lose control. When that happens, we aren't bad people. We just feel too badly to make good decisions. If we had a special place where we could go and things there to do to help us feel better, then we could feel good enough to be with people again. Decide together where they want their time out to be and what the child can do while there. Their input is crucial. And discuss your plans too, mommy and daddy. Some children have a safe place or a sparkle place in a corner of the room or a box filled with stuffed animals to hug, toys to play with, or a mad pillow to hit, music to listen to, or even books to read. You can even make a magic suitcase that can travel to grandma's house or go on vacation with you. 
The more you involve your child, the more successful timeout will be. Keep stating the purpose of timeout, not to hurt, but to help. Use a timer or don't. Let the child set it if you both agree, or have the child simply come back when he or she can be with people again. Whatever you agree on, you as the parent must stay calm. Joining their chaos by yelling and screaming will only create more problems. Some parenting experts advocate staying with the child during a timeout. The belief is that the child most needs us when they are at their most unlovable. Some parents successfully use a rocking technique, saying, I will hold you until the mad's out. If this does not match your comfort level, do not fret. You and your child have to agree. Find things that both feel good about. At the end of the positive timeout, our parental work really begins. This is precisely when most parents think their job is finished. But remember, timeout is the gateway, not the solution. If done well, it will make possible for you to find a solution together. Do not neglect the teaching now that positive timeout has created the wonderful teachable moment. Work together with the child and problem solve. What are some things you can do the next time you are so mad that you want to hit your sister? And what are some things you can do today for your sister that can make her day go better? Brainstorm alternatives with your child. He or she will be ready now to really think and discuss with you. Together you can make plans or contracts for the future. No shaming. You encourage. You empower. Gone is the naughty chair shoved in a corner. Gone is humiliation and disgrace. Say hello to the teaching of a life skill. Go forth and sparkle.